Alright, so now we're going to define what a bull market is. So if you're still watching this course in 2017, a bull market is what we have been seeing for the last couple of years. In a bull market, share prices are rising and most investors are buying. Uh, now, bullish investors make money from rising stock prices, and the reason it's called a bullish investor or a bull market is because when a bull attacks, they attack um, in an upward motion with their horns, and that's just to symbolize rising stock prices. So when you're a bull, um, you're investing in a stock when you expect the price to rise, and you make money from rising stock prices. A bull market occurs during a strong economic time, and uh, company profits will be rising, unemployment will be falling, and wages will be rising as well. These are all telltale signs of a bull market. Now, GDP or gross domestic product is also growing, and this is an indicator of the overall size of an economy looking at goods and services. So this is something that people look at um, when they're trying to tell whether or not we are in a bear market or a bull market. And over the last couple of years, we have seen a bull market. Now, the important thing you guys have to remember, and we're going to talk about this a lot, so don't worry about this now, but the biggest problem out there is that people are so petrified of this bear market. And uh, it makes sense because, you know, a lot of a lot of Wall Street news um, outlets push this and they push the fear on people. But there's absolutely no reason to ever fear a bear market. It's a temporary, you know, correction that takes place. And uh, we're going to talk about the psychology of the stock market later on in this course. So don't worry about that just yet. But um, I just don't want you guys to worry about a bear market. It's a very regular occurrence. But just for example's sake, here are three bull markets that I've highlighted here. And obviously we are currently in that bull market that started around the end of 2009 into 2010. And uh, as you can see, this has been quite the bull ride here. We are uh, over seven years in on this bull market. Um, the other two bull markets are highlighted there as well. And um, then we're going to talk about a bear market now. So in a bear market, share prices are falling and most investors are selling or they are out of the market. Now, bearish investors make money from falling stock prices, and this is similar to how a bear attacks. They attack with their claw in a downward motion, so that is symbolic of bearish investors who are hoping a stock price will go down in value, um, and they make money from falling stock prices. And a bear market happens during poor economic times. Company profits will be falling, unemployment will be rising, wages will be flat or falling, and that GDP is also falling. The primary triggers of a bear market are investor sentiment and economic cycles and we're going to explain what those are in a little bit here um, but the economic cycles part is just you know part of a cycle it's kind of like how we have it's just like the seasons you know we have different seasons in our climate and you know we're gonna have different seasons in the stock market so it's really just economic cycles there are things that happen um, that really we have no control over now federal interest rates and tax rates can result in economic expansions or contractions basically when you see lower interest rates um, that is um, cheaper corporate borrowing so you may see companies borrowing more money and expanding because of the lower interest rates and obviously tax rates um, eat into profits so if you see taxes lowering you're going to see more profits for a company and if taxes are rising there's going to be less profits and at the end of the day that is going to be passed on to the shareholder um, through the earnings per share and eventually you know it's going to be represented in that share price so here I've highlighted the two recent bear markets and as you can see the bear markets are typically a much shorter duration than those bull markets um, so those are just two of the most recent bear markets we have seen okay so now we're gonna talk about investor sentiment which is one of the biggest precursors to a bear or a bull market so investor or market sentiment is the overall feeling of the market and as we will discuss later on the market is controlled by the emotions of fear and greed I know a lot of people try to overcomplicate the stock market they try to make it all about numbers and figures and uh, the truth is guys the stock market is controlled by two things that is the fear and the greed and I want you guys to commit that to memory um, these go hand in hand with supply and demand which we're going to talk about in a little bit but uh, the majority of the market is simply controlled by fear and greed now falling investor confidence or fear indicated by a sell-off that will indicate a bear market may be on the horizon so when investors lose confidence in the market they become fearful a lot of them begin to sell off and um, that sell-off can really push us into a bear market uh, now, the interesting thing is that a lot of people do things because they are afraid of a bear market. So something happens, maybe there's something going on in the geopolitical climate, maybe there's something going on that they're worried about. For example, a lot of people had concerns when Donald Trump was elected president. And uh, so as a result, if people are fearful enough and there is enough sell-off pressure, 
Um, this sell-off in fear of a bear market can actually trigger that bear market and turn those expectations into a reality. So oftentimes, people being afraid of a bear market and taking actions, uh, that actually causes the bear market itself, which is very interesting. So there are actually a couple different stages of the bear market. So here are the four stages of a bear market. So number one, we are at a period where prices are high. There's bullish sentiments, so people are expecting stock prices to go higher. We're in a bull market, and many investors begin to take profits. So this is a point where a lot of beginner investors are getting in because that's the point when uh, you're starting to realize that um, markets are a little bit high. The prices are a little high. And when stupid money is being made, when you see beginners getting into the stock market and making money, um, that's not to say you guys won't have luck with it. I mean, you guys are taking the steps to educate yourself, and this separates you from what I call a beginner. I call a beginner the type of person who just dives right in without uh, you know, solidifying an educational foundation. But you know, you see a lot of people that are diving in and they're making money, you know, on their first couple of investments and trades and you're kind of going, "Wow, that's that's kind of weird, you know. Usually people are, you know, some people are having luck with it, some people are not. But when everyone is having luck with it, that's a sign that, you know, the bull market may be a little overextended. And this is when the institutional investors and the uh, you know, the hardened investors who have lived through a bear market, they've already lived through this. A lot of these new investors have never even seen or heard of a bear market. Um a lot of those older investors who have some more experience, that's when they start to take profits. They get a little skeptical of the market. They say, you know, things seem a little bit overvalued. We're seeing a lot of people just diving right in and making money um, right off the bat. And that's not typical of a market. So that's when they say, okay, we're going to start to take profits off the table. So as a result of that profit taking, prices begin to fall. And that's when the herd follows, okay? Um, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but I just want to bring it up now. You have the bulls out there. The bulls make money from rising stock prices. The bears make money from falling stock prices, and the sheep or the hogs get slaughtered. I use the sheep as the terminology. Some people use hogs, but I always use it as the sheep because I think of the sheep being following the herd. And so think of the sheep out there as the herd in the masses, and the sheep are going to follow the herd. And as a result, when people begin to take profits, everyone's going to start to sell because the herd is going to follow. So basically, the initial investors took profits, and now the herd is going to follow because they're looking to take profits because loss aversion is being triggered. This is one of the psychological reasons why people sell a stock. We're going to get into this later on. That's going to be one of my favorite sections to cover. Um, so at this point, panic begins to be triggered, and the market is very uncertain. You're seeing a very volatile market. People have concerns about the market. And in investor sentiment at that point is moving from a, uh, a bullish sentiment towards a bearish sentiment. Right now, it's pretty much uncertain. So if this does end up resulting in a bear market, you're going to see prices fall and fall and fall. Um, people are going to be more fearful of the market. More people are going to be getting out of the market. But once the market is oversold, buying will eventually outpace the selling, and this is going to create demand. So at that point, you're going to see a little bit of greed. You're going to see greed start to step in. So for a while there during the, you know, the second stage, investors are very fearful. Everyone's getting out of the market. People are saying you'd be crazy to buy. Um, but once you get to step three there or stage three, that's when you're seeing investors start to say, okay, um, there's a lot of good companies that are significantly undervalued. I'm going to start investing. And oftentimes it's those who took profits before the bear market. It's those institutional investors, those long-time investors that have been through many bear markets and bull markets. They start to understand that, hey, these are just cycles. These are just trends. And that's when they start to scoop up these undervalued stocks and they begin to support the stock prices. And then eventually the fall levels off and investors enter the market again. And at that point, the market gives way to a bull market. This is finally the end of that bear market. Prices are being supported, and then you're starting to see prices rise. So now let's talk about these stages of a bull market. And this one's a little bit longer. There's six different stages to a bull market I want to discuss. Uh, but first, let's have a quote from Sir John Templeton. Bull markets are born on pessimism, grown on skepticism, mature on optimism, and die on euphoria. Uh, this is one of the best ways you could ever understand what a bull market is. And uh, I highly recommend you guys write this quote down somewhere. You can pause this video, write it in the notes on your phone. Just go back to this to remind yourself what a bull market is. Because most people don't understand that a bull market will die. And uh, you know that's why people have that mindset thinking that prices will only go up. The first thing that happens is that bear market comes to an end and bullish investors begin to support the stock price. 
So the first step is that prices bottom out, and this can be an abrupt V-shaped bottom out or a gradual rolling low. So it can be a very sharp turnaround or it can be a turnaround that takes um, a little bit of time. Um, next, what happens is speculative investors start to buy, but the market sentiment is skepticism. Many see this as a rally in the ongoing trend of the bear market. So a lot of times you'll hear people saying, this is your last time to get out of the market. You know, we're seeing a short rally here. We're seeing a short-lived rally. That's not sustainable. So if you were looking to get out of the market, you know, this is the time to do it. That's what you're going to hear people saying. But this is the point when these speculative investors begin to scoop up stocks. They're usually the first ones in. Um, you know, kind of picture it as a, as a place that was hit by a hurricane. And uh, these are the first people that go in there to start to rebuild. You know, a lot of people say they're crazy. The area has been destroyed. And uh, these are the first people on the ground. The first boots on the ground are these speculative investors. Now, eventually, the overall economy strengthens and earnings begin to grow. And this is when the value investors start to hunt for dividends and undervalued companies. So this is when there are definite signs that the bear market is coming to a close. We're seeing definite signs of a bull market underway and as a result value investors we're going to talk about value investors later this is a strategy that Benjamin Graham teaches and uh, it's pretty much the strategy of Warren Buffett as well but this is when the value investors are going to start hunting for dividends and undervalued companies so they're going to be the next ones who are going into that destroyed area you know the hurricane was hit the first people went in there and now more people are like okay it looks like the damage is done people are starting to rebuild I think I'm going to move into that area too and start to rebuild as well now the fourth stage of the bull market is when the rising tides lift all boats. This is a very important thing I want you guys to remember with the stock market is the rising tides lift all boats. Retail investors enter the market and experience beginner's luck. Um, this is when things start to get a little overvalued again. So we were talking about this earlier. This is when retail beginner investors, first time investors dive into the market. And again, I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about people who have no educational foundation. They pick stocks based on whatever stock is being mentioned in the news, and they start to experience beginner's luck. Um, the investors are blindly optimistic solely because they have no experience in the market, and they've never lived through a bear market. So they really only see what is ahead of them and what has happened over the last year or so. They don't understand that a bear market is uh, looming on the horizon at some point. So this is when you're going to see stocks soar above IPO prices. So we talked about IPOs earlier. And uh, when a company is going public and you see them soar well above that initial public offering price, that's often a sign that um, we are in a bit of an overly optimistic market at that point. The fifth stage of a bull market is when investors are outright delusional. And this is when stocks become significantly overvalued and keen investors get a whiff and some take profits off the table. So this is when the larger institutional investors, again, they start to get skeptical. They're seeing people making money hand over fist. They're seeing beginners get into the market and see unrealistic returns. They're going, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem like a healthy market. So this is when a lot of investors begin to take money off the table. And then obviously this is where the sixth stage is triggered. This is when stock prices level off and begin to fall. Retail investors are hoping to break even on investments and the bullish sentiment waivers. So what I mean by this is a lot of these beginner uh, retail investors buy a stock at the peak and then they're starting to see prices waver and they're just looking to break even. They just want to get out of the market. You're seeing people who are generally uncertain and uh, the overall market sentiment is moving from bullish to a skeptical stage and that's when the bull market will eventually give way to a bear market. So guys, those are all of the stages of a bull and bear market and how they tie in together.